you have found what lights you up. I'm your host, Sunny the Life Coach, and I'm here because I see you searching for something or someone out there to help you feel better, something to take away the pain that you're feeling, the inadequacies. I know all of the things that happen in life can leave you feeling empty. Your search is over. This podcast is all about finding your own freedom and power to love yourself enough to shine in the ways you were always meant to, the ways in which you are already fully capable of. If you're ready for some real talk, some serious truth bombs, and a few F-bombs, you are in the right place. Let's do this. Let's get lit. Hey there, welcome to episode 52. Do you know what that means? It means that this episode you're listening to right now is the one that marks my podcast baby's first birthday. Yay! What an accomplishment. She has grown quite nicely, I must say. I think she is doing great exactly where she is supposed to be. If you'd like to join me in celebrating my podcast baby's first birthday, drop her a sweet review on Apple Podcasts and tell everyone else how great she is. Seriously, it means a lot more than you realize. People find podcasts based on reviews, so it really does matter. It'll be like receiving a birthday card in the mail because that's so special, isn't it? That's far more special than receiving a post on social media. I'm just saying. I love each and every one of you that posts on my Facebook wall when it's my birthday. I promise. When someone takes the time to pick out a card for you, address it, and put it in the mail, it means that you're really special. And I do realize that's the equivalent of what it takes to write a review for anyone or anything be it for a podcast or a business on Google or that Verbo place you stayed on your last vacation or TripAdvisor for the excursion that you took while you were there. I get that it takes a few minutes longer than writing a happy birthday post in that field that Facebook automatically provides for you. I get it. And that's why I'm absolutely honored for every single one that I receive. I send gratitude for each one. This amazing anniversary also marks one full year of me showing up for this podcast and for you every single week. This is such an amazing milestone, and I have loved every minute of it. It wasn't nearly as difficult as my brain made me think that it would be, and the time has flown right on by. I have never felt challenged on what to talk about. I think that was one of my initial concerns in the beginning. What if I run out of things to say? I am pleased to report that not only has that not been an issue at all, I don't see myself running out of things to talk to you about anytime soon. That's right. I have a lot of shit to say. And I'm just getting warmed up. So I hope you're enjoying these very real and raw topics because I'm not going anywhere. I'm here to tell it to you straight. I want as many people as possible out there to come to full awareness that you are worthy. You are beautiful. You have gifts. There is a reason that you exist. And that's really what we tend to get hung up on at times, isn't it? why am I here? What's the point? Who am I? Really? I am quite certain that every one of us have asked these questions at one point or another. While on this journey of life, I am quite confident that those questions have been asked by humans for centuries. What is the meaning of my existence? What lights me up? And as I touched on in the last episode, why me? All of the questions, all of the days of our lives, those questions don't end when we grow beyond four years old. 
my friends. We are constantly asking those questions. If we are engaging at all in taking an active role in our lives, we are asking those questions and more. It keeps us in that growth mindset. And for that reason alone, it's perfectly fine to keep asking them. Because the answers you provide in your 20s may not be the same in your 40s or in your 60s. And that's okay, too. Just keep going and keep growing. And I personally think that one of the very best questions we can continually ask ourselves as we grow is, who am I? We'll get some very interesting answers to that when we really sit with ourselves and our thoughts about who we really are. I told you last week that I was going to span three recent events that I have experienced over both episode 51 and this one. Just to recap, and in case you haven't yet heard episode 51, those three events were as follows. First, I re-engaged in some traumatic experiences surrounding my infertility and near-death experiences as the result of an interview with a dear friend for her podcast. I also recorded an interview for this podcast with another dear friend around manifesting and how the universe is always working for you. You're going to finally get to hear that one next week. Can't wait. And finally, I also had my first astrology reading where I learned a lot more about myself and how my life has played out so far. More about me in that realm than I'm an Aries. I learned about how my traumas are actually positioned to become gifts to share with the world through my communications. And that was amazing. Now, I'm not going to go into the astrology area a great deal because I don't want to mess it up. I barely know how to even talk about it. So maybe I can bring that friend on someday to explain it. I'm meeting so many wonderful humans on this current path. I can't even express how awesome that is. I'll share some of my own notes from that reading because it really was insightful for me. And it plays into the whole who am I concept that I want to discuss with you on my podcast, Baby's Birthday. What I'm not going to do is tell you which planet is rising where, because that's the part I know I will get wrong. I do know that Mars and Pluto played some key roles. It was so fun. Anyway, those three events that were really just deep conversations with three of my friends lit the spark for me to create this episode. And speaking of spark, I mentioned the movie Soul last week and that it would play a little bit into the concepts of this topic. Let's do that now since we're talking about spark. I'm not going to give too much of the movie away if you haven't seen it yet and you still want to, but I think it's safe to tell you this about it. Surely you know that the concept of the movie is that a man dies before he believes it's his time to because he was just on his way to realizing his lifelong dream when he died, like literally on his way there. And so he fights like hell to get out of the queue for the great beyond and finds himself in the great before, which I thought was absolutely wonderful because I was already on board with the idea that our souls choose to come here and they have their purpose when they do. It's just that we humans forget what that purpose was because we get sucked into living life on this planet. In fact, one of my favorite quotes from the movie comes from 22, another soul who really just wants to stay where it is, says, don't worry, you can't crush a soul here. That's what life on earth is for. (laughs) It is an excellent movie, friends. I personally think every Pixar movie is outstanding. So there's that. 
Anyway, in the movie, before a soul can get the green light to go to Earth and inhabit the body of a human, it has to find its spark or what is eventually going to become its purpose, its very reason for being, for existing. Ah, and there are so many names for this, but another one that I've been drawn to for a while is Dharma, which has its origins in Hinduism and essentially means your purpose, your path of rightness, not righteousness, but rightness. So I love to use the term Dharma as well, especially since I'm reading a book about it now. Look, everything can't be about self-help in my world. Sometimes I need it to be about self-discovery, really. When I talk about our journey, these days I'm really thinking of it as a path of self-discovery. Not always rainbows and sunshine. Sometimes there's some darkness, but as you know, that contrast is necessary in life. And here's what I've come to understand over the past few years of really digging into that existential question of who I really am. I found out all of the things that I am not. I am not my trauma. I am not the sum of my experiences. I am not who I was as a child. I am definitely not who I was as an adolescent or a teen. Thank God. I am not a daughter, wife, mother. I am not a former well-rounded IT professional. I am not an amazing coach with a lovely podcast baby that is celebrating her first birthday. I am not other people's opinions of me. I am not my thoughts about me. I am some of those things some of the time, but ultimately I am much greater than that. There is such a deeper meaning to who we really are than what we do for a living, who we partner with or don't who we parent or don't. There is so much more. There is a way of being and a way of knowing that I promise you I am only beginning to scratch the surface of, but I'm on the right path because I know that I am. Remember the story I told you about how I came to be a coach in the first place? I had lost my job and I felt like a failure, but I had a knowing that I didn't want to get back in the market. I knew that. I was repelled at the thought of it. Around that same time, I had a conversation with a friend. I was definitely seeking something. And she dropped the term life coach as a, by the way, and I had another knowing, a deeper knowing that showed up like butterflies in my stomach, almost like you get when you first fall in love with someone. Yes, like that. And as soon as I got home, I googled, what is a life coach? (laughs) It's that. Or that time 13 years ago when my husband and I had an honest discussion about how we were going to proceed on this path to parenthood. And we said, how about adoption? And I had another feeling exactly then, knowing that we were going to change course and that this was the right course. Adoption for us was a rightness life coaching for me was a rightness, this deep sensation in your body that comes with a knowing that your answer in this moment needs to be a hell yes. That is your inner being. As my friend Christine calls it, your inner goddess. Maybe it's your soul stirring, waking up and getting freaking excited because you are finally remembering 
what you are here for. Maybe it's your Dharma. Maybe it's source energy. Maybe it's God. Maybe it's all of those things. Whatever it is, it's something that we tend to suppress as humans. We are really good at that. We are much better at tuning out than tuning in, I can assure you. Numbing away all of the emotions, trying to escape instead of really feeling into them. We're not that good at contemplating or really tapping into our creativity because we've decided we're too busy for that. And still, we make time to scroll social media and compare our lives to others. We can find ways to do that all day, every day. I know I bring this up a lot, but I do it because it's a damn truth bomb. Anyway, we tend to define ourselves by how we think others see us or by our profession. We might even spout off a well-rehearsed elevator speech or by one of the many roles that we play in our movie. Daughter, wife, mother, entrepreneur. This is a really good time for me to insert a dream that I had a few years ago about a mentor that I really, really and truly admired. And in this dream, and I always had it in my mind that I was going to meet her one day. And in this dream, we were at some kind of a conference. I think the thing that I had in my mind was that it was the first of many um, coaching-related conferences that I was going to attend that she would be a speaker at or some such thing. Anyway, I found at one point she was walking in my direction and I was just like almost frozen going, oh my God, she's coming this way. What do I say? What do I do? And what I did was I put my hand out to shake her hand. This dream was pre-COVID, you all. <laughs> it was. And I put my hand out to shake her hand and I spouted off this elevator speech. This is who I am. Th who I am would be my name right? My name, I'm a coach. This is who I coach. This is what I do. I'm a huge admirer, blah, blah, blah. I spout that off to her. In response to her question, she said, who, you know, who are you? This is what I responded. And she looked at me and she just stood there. She didn't shake my hand. She looked at me and she said, no, I said, who are you? And she walked right past and just left me standing there stunned. And of course, that's the point that I woke up and I said, I am definitely going to have to make an episode out of this one for sure. Oh my gosh. And it just so happens, this is the full circle moment, you all. It just so happens that it is the same mentor that a few episodes back I basically decided I needed to pull away from because I was no longer aligned because where she is going is not where I am going. And that's not who I am. Wow. Whoa, so mind-blowing, right? Anyway, we define ourselves by the roles we're playing because it's what we do as humans. It simply allows us to understand each other intellectually, emotionally, and sometimes spiritually. These roles aren't the core of who we really are. They're just a way that we communicate with one another and come to a surface level awareness and understanding of our commonalities and yes, our differences. So go ahead and make a list of all of the roles you're playing in life right now. Simply writing them down can go a long way toward helping you see that this list is just that. It's a list of words, notions, concepts. Coming back to Don Miguel Ruiz Jr.'s explanation of these roles as masks that we wear. It isn't too hard to figure out that it's what we do to navigate this world. It's how we survive and thrive in it. I'm going to share the following quote from his book, The Mastery of Self, that I feel explains it very well and succinctly. He says, one of the greatest temptations you will face is to believe that any mask you wear is real. This is true regardless of whether or not someone else projects the mask onto you 
or if you've created the mask for yourself. For instance, if things are going well in your life and you're succeeding at work or accomplishing your goals, your ego may want to create and hold on to the identity of one who has succeeded or accomplished. Conversely, when things don't go your way, the parasite which is what I've referred to as my inner mean bitch, I'm inserting my comment here, (laughs) may scream so loudly that you are tempted to pick up the mask of one who has failed or isn't worthy. It is in these instances that your practice of awareness can bring you back to the truth. The real you, the authentic self, is so much more than any mask can portray. Anytime you forget this truth and think a mask is real, suffering and delusion aren't far away. End quote. Listen, the subtitle of that book is A Toltec Guide to Personal Freedom, and I cannot recommend it enough if you're on a quest to find yourself. If you're not sure how to sit with yourself and really go inward, He gives exercises at the end of each chapter. It's a small book, easy read, so simple to understand if you are open to understanding. Because we tend to seek all of the answers outside of ourselves. And I know some of you listening identify with religion and that resonates with you. Great! You don't have to compromise your beliefs in God or the Bible or whatever written texts that you believe in order to take these messages in. Being with yourself and truly listening to yourself, I truly believe could only strengthen your practice in any belief that you feel aligned with. Just think about being open. Because every time that I allow myself to be open to alternate viewpoints, I find another nugget to take away and further form my own truth and understanding of what it means to navigate within myself. I get one step closer to finding my authentic self, not the one that society wants me to conform to or identify with, or align with, but the real me. And I have to tell you, that feels so very beautiful and perfect. Listen to the signals, and that inner voice of longing. Not the mean bitch that represents ego and societal norms, but the one that nudges you in a certain direction. The one that nudged me to find the child that was meant for us. The one that nudged me to explore coaching as a way to help others to heal. The one that lit up when I saw that my friend was doing limited astrology readings and my thought was, hey, that sounds kind of cool. But something inside of me was saying, do it. And do you know what else came out of that reading? that I am here to help people build something real. Those are my actual notes. And that the key to doing that is to allow myself to experience joy. The intensity part I've got down, nailed it. My work is to find ways to be loving and gentle with myself, to come to the knowing that basking in compassion is regenerative. Let me say that again, because it really spoke to me. And I keep reading that sentence of my notes over and over. Basking in compassion is regenerative. That is the exact phrase that my friend used. And I felt so connected to that. I think if that's the direction that I'm going, and it does feel like rightness, because I've spent plenty of time in the deep, dark holes of self-loathing that you should come with me. I can't think of a better path to follow right now. I do think that our paths will 
change and evolve over time, your path, my path, and that we will continue to grow and evolve with time because that's why we are here, to continually learn about ourselves and others. We think that we're done learning when we have completed all of the requirements of the man-made institutions that we are told will make us successful in life. Most of us probably checked those boxes a long time ago and are sitting here thinking, now what? Well, I think there's a part of you that knows full well, now what? There's a part of you that will absolutely light up when you see a post on social media that is a call to action or you meet a new person for the first time, or someone says something that resonates in a way that you didn't even expect. It's there for you if you are willing to listen. Everything you are seeking is right there. As Rumi says, there is a voice that doesn't use words. Listen. Indeed. And I know it seems that I bash social media a lot, and I don't mean for it to come across as if I am. Trust me, I use it. Some of the most fulfilling relationships I have developed with other humans over time started out with a post or comment that resonated with me. What I find is that those things happen when I'm very consciously limiting the amount of time that I spend on it when I check in only when I have planned to do so, not as a way to check out, but as a way to check in. When I use it that way, I tend to see exactly who or what I'm meant to see in that moment. In fact, I met one of those friends at the yoga studio this morning, and then we grabbed lunch and we spent our time together commiserating on a cellular level, to coin a phrase from my friend Whitney. It was a great visit, and the only way we found each other is from a call to action post that she did when she was searching and feeling vulnerable. We have formed such a perfect friendship. I get her and she gets me, and as far as I know, I'm the only one who responded to her or came close to meeting the criteria she was looking for in that original post. And oh, by the way, I noticed her tennis shoes that she was wearing are exactly the same shoes that I have at home in my garage. I was like, what is happening here? Why are you wearing my shoes? I, it was crazy. It was meant to happen that way. That's how the universe works. And sometimes social media is the conduit to something beautiful. It's true. Next week, my friend Christine will explain it more, so be sure to tune in. In fact, I already have a part two scheduled because we had so much to talk about we weren't able to get to it all. Thank you. Thank you for joining me and celebrating my podcast baby's first birthday. I am so unbelievably honored to be sharing what I've learned and what I continue to learn with each of you every week. As I was approaching that first year, I started inviting others to share their voices too, and I'm loving those conversations so very much. I hope that you are as well. Thank you for being on this journey with me. Get to the business of finding out who you really are. Light up, shine on.